Ladies and gentlemen, once again, good afternoon and welcome to the Chartered Quality Institute's International Quality Awards 2020. Please welcome your host, Chief Executive of the CQI, Mr. Vince Desmond. Hello. The pandemic means that this year's International Quality Awards come to you digitally. Now, that means we can't meet personally, but it does mean that we can welcome so many more people from around the globe. From Asia to the Americas, from Africa to Australasia and Europe, thank you for joining us and welcome. Now, I know that the pandemic has provided serious, serious problems for us, both professionally and personally. But I hope that today provides a little light in our darkness as we hear from the individuals and teams who've made such a difference to their businesses, their customers, their stakeholders, and to the quality of life for society in general. To everyone who entered the awards this year, thank you not only for your dedication to making business better, but also for sharing your experiences and stories. These awards are about recognition and celebration, but also about learning. To our superb finalists, you are, of course, all wonderful exemplars of the very best that our expert quality management community has to offer. The deserved recognition that you all receive today is a consequence of hard work and dedication. My heartfelt congratulations to all of you. Today is also a consequence of the hard work and dedication of our excellent CQI staff team and of course our wonderful judges. You give so freely of your expertise, your time and your experience. We simply couldn't do these awards without you. You all deserve an award and my sincere thanks for your support. Our headline sponsor today is celebrating its 25th anniversary in the context of the pandemic and Brexit, both of which serve to underline the vital importance of a strong national quality infrastructure. In that busy context, I'm delighted that the UK's national and the world's leading uh, accreditation body, United Kingdom Accreditation Service, is our headline partner for these awards. I'm delighted to introduce the CEO of UCAS, Matt Gantley, to help us open our awards event today. Matt. Thank you very much, Vince. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning or good evening, depending on where you are in the world today. I'm delighted to join Vince in welcoming you to the CQI 2020 International Quality Awards and for UCAS to be this year's headline partner. 2020 was always going to be an exceptional year for UCAS because as Vince has mentioned, it's our 25th anniversary. Though clearly we have some way to go to catch up with CQI who celebrated their centenary last year. But of course, due to COVID-19, it has been an exceptional year in ways that none of us could have imagined 12 months ago. The pandemic has disrupted lives and economies all around the world and has tested us like never before. Speaking on behalf of UCAS, we've had to be agile and adapt to a very different world 
and to very different ways of working. I'm pleased to report that we've done ex extremely successfully by remaining focused on quality and remaining close to our stakeholders, partners and customers. In spite of the practical difficulties, we have developed new ways to maintain the credibility and integrity of accredited testing, inspection and certification. I would like to give my sincere thanks to my UCAS colleagues and our customers for their unstinting efforts during this difficult period and to our chairman, Lord Lindsay, our members and our board for their support. But we are not alone in rising to these challenges. So I want to pay tribute to the way the entire global quality infrastructure has responded to the challenges of 2020. In our work, both in the UK and internationally, we have seen an amazing response from our international accreditation peers, from laboratories, inspection bodies, certification bodies, from auditors, from training organizations, from consultants, and more broadly, quality professionals. The way that the whole quality profession has pulled together has been nothing short of extraordinary, nor will the challenges disappear in the foreseeable future. The phrase, the new normal, is on everybody's lips, but even now, we don't know what the new normal will look like longer term, only that it will be very different from the old normal, driven by the accelerating challenges of the fourth industrial revolution. Of course, there will be the health and social impact of COVID-19 still to deal with longer term, alongside the economic impact that this has caused. But equally, there will be the need to adapt to the increasingly virtual and digital world typified by today's virtual ceremony, where so much of our work, especially consulting, monitoring, assessment and training, will be done remotely and relying on the interchange of data. And here in the United Kingdom, we also have the opportunity and the challenge of a post-Brexit world to adapt to and the many new free trade agreements across the globe. So there is no better way to celebrate the immense achievements of the past year than here today at the CQI 2020 International Quality Awards. Despite the circumstances, the excellent work being done in the world of quality has continued. And we are here today to celebrate this. COVID-19 has shown us how important quality is, and it is exposed to the world, for instance, in the connection with PPE, ventilators, vaccine development, and healthcare testing, just why quality is so important to all of our daily lives. In many ways, I think we all deserve an award for the resilience, creativity, and determination shown by our industry. We are all winners here today, and I'd like to congratulate all of the finalists and all of the winners today. Thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely ceremony. Thank you very much, Matt, for those encouraging words and for your support of the CQI and, of course, for being headline partner this year. Now, let's get down to the business of meeting our inspiring finalists and revealing the winners. Our first category is so important. It recognises, celebrates and I hope encourages the diversity of talent that is key to the future of our profession. The Emerging Talent Award recognises a quality professional who has contributed most to their organisation in the areas of governance, assurance, improvement and leadership as defined in the CQI competence framework in the first eight years of their career. We have three outstanding finalists. Ian, over to you. Thank you, Vince. On the shortlist for the first award, Nicole Thompson, Costain. Nicole works for Costain as a junior quality engineer on Project Mensa, which is a nuclear licensed site. Mensa is a unique new build project of national significance, which contributes directly to the continuous at sea deterrent. Nicole manages a key supplier, ensuring that the requirements of the client are met whilst encouraging a quality culture and reducing cost and risk to the project. The judges felt that she is already making a real difference at Costain and that she showed a huge amount of potential. They are all excited to know what the future holds for her. Elizabeth Garrison, LifeScan. Elizabeth works as a senior quality engineer at LifeScan a global medical device company who design and manufacture blood glucose monitoring technologies for individuals with diabetes. 
Amongst other things, she supports the validation of significant technical developments which will positively affect the well-being of hundreds of thousands of people. The judges felt that she provided a very warm and solid submission for the Emerging Talent Award, which clearly evidenced her understanding of many aspects of quality. She also came across really well during the interview, was an extremely clear speaker, and exuded a perfect level of authority and assurance when presenting. John Jack, LifeScan. Like Elizabeth, John also works for LifeScan, joining the company as one of the first quality engineering apprentices on a newly developed program through the University of the Highlands and Islands. He has gained experience in various departments, including customer quality, supplier quality, and quality laboratories, allowing him to understand the linkages between functions. The judges were left in no doubt that John is passionate about the quality profession and the future journey that his career may take. So there are three fine contenders. Vince, please can you reveal the Emerging Talent Award winner? And the winner is... John Jack. John not only demonstrated a clear understanding of how to apply modern day quality principles in their work, but also took the opportunity to share views with the judges as to the future of the profession. Through his work with schools and the next generation, John Jack is a remarkable advocate for our vocation and is already inspiring future quality professionals. John, please accept your award as the Emerging Talent Winner 2020. Oh, I'm, I'm really quite overwhelmed with this. Um, I feel really, really honoured um, to accept this award. You know, um, seeing uh, Victoria win it last year, you know, it really inspired me to apply as well and getting to win it myself is fantastic. I'd, I'd first like to say well done to Elizabeth and Nicole. It's, you know, it was a really great achievement for us all to get into the final. Um, you know, so, so well done. Uh, hopefully we can work together in the future. Um, a few quick thank yous. Um, thank you to the judges for your time and dedication in the selection process. You really made me feel at ease during that, so thank you so much for that. Um, and I'd also like to say thank you to uh, colleagues at LifeScan, past and present, who have supported me over the course of my apprenticeship and now into my new role, and also for not rolling their eyes at me too much when I ask some really silly questions at first. Um, a lot of people have supported me through the first steps of my career, and I'm super grateful for for all of that. And I hope that I can use you know this kind of recognition platform to help encourage more people, more young people, into a career in quality. Thank you all. Thank you very much, John, for those excellent words, and congratulations again for being our uh, uh, winner of the uh, emerging uh, emerging talent award. Well done. Now, our next award is for Audit System. This award honours the team that fuels their organisation's success by establishing and delivering an effective audit system, helping de-risk and improve organisational performance. Ian, let's hear about our finalists and their stories. LifeScan, submitted by Rona McLeod. LifeScan, as we heard in the Emerging Talent category, is a world leader in the blood glucose monitoring market, providing products globally to more than 20 million people who depend on LifeScan to help them manage their diabetes, both at home and in healthcare facilities. LifeScan were divested by Johnson & Johnson at the end of 2018, and in splitting out their processes, decided not only to maintain the performance of their internal audit function, but to improve upon it. The judges were impressed how a change in business ownership can be used to drive such a positive change in audit culture. Katargas Operating Company Limited, submitted by Ahmed Barakat. Katargas is a global energy operator running 14 liquefied natural gas liquefaction and purification facilities with an annual production capacity of 77 million tonnes, which makes Katargas the largest LNG producer in the world. The QA, QC and Corrosion Division is operating within a well-defined quality verification program to oversee contractors and vendors' activities, ultimately confirming that equipment and materials are fit for purpose and that projects are executed in line with requirements. 
The Qatar Gas Audit Program is a core part of this verification system, and judges were impressed by the way Qatar Gas understood and gave evidence of the strategic importance of their audit system to the success of the company. Both worthy finalists, Vince, please reveal the winner. And the winner of the Audit System Award is Qatar Gas. Good afternoon, everyone. I bring you special greetings from Qatar Gas, the world's largest LNG producer. I'm truly humbled and honored to be here with you today. It's with great satisfaction and eminence pride that I accept this award on behalf of Qatar Gas and, of course, on behalf of the KPC and Corrosion Division, without whom this achievement wouldn't be possible. This award is a testament of the tireless efforts and dedication, unwavering professionalism of the quality team. Time and again, the established quality audit program has proven invaluable to Qatar Gas as a fundamental element for maintaining the organization's vision, reinforcing our core values to achieve sustainable business success. It has consistently resulted in significant improvements to the internal processes, and without dispute, this program has enhanced the performance of the quality management system of our external partners. We are fortunate to serve an organization that recognizes quality and flawless execution as one of its six pillars of excellence. The pursuit of excellence is driven by an inherent quality culture from which our common values and beliefs are cultivated. A healthy quality culture begins with a strong leadership, which is committed to quality in letter and spirit. Such commitment fosters a team that naturally strives for quality excellence and drives continual improvement and this award is a tremendous accomplishment for the team, both personally and professionally. At this point, I would specifically like to acknowledge two key members of the audit team and worthy recipients of this award, Mark Kemp and Alistair Kohler, who have provided constant and stellar support to the audit program throughout recent years. Finally, I would like to extend deepest gratitude and utmost respect to my management team for their unfailing support and the confidence they have placed in our team throughout this journey, Mr. Abdullah Al Hajri and Mr. Brent Al Mosley. Once again, it's truly an honor to receive this prestigious award on behalf of Qatar Gans and the team. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations to you for your achievements. Um, and we will now move on to the next award. So, our next reward is for improvement system and celebrates a team that has moved its organization forward by establishing and delivering an effective improvement system that delivers real value for the organization, its customers and stakeholders. Ian, please introduce the finalists and their stories. And the finalists are Dubai Police, submitted by Noura al -Manduz. Dubai Police have put in place a system where autonomous improvement teams are supported by robust infrastructure and solid quality methods. They demonstrated how they had delivered significant benefits in terms of cost, whilst also reducing crime rates and producing benefits to other government institutions, for example, the Ministry of the Interior. The judges were impressed by the commitment to systematic improvement, evidenced by the highest levels within the Dubai government. Tofash, submitted by Tansil Karaman. Tofash is the best automotive production plant within the Fiat Chrysler Automotive Group in terms of measures of world-class manufacturing. However, in 2017, their 149 local suppliers were not competitive against these measures and there were some critical supply problems. Tofash created a platform and system to support collaboration between these suppliers and local digital startups who might have creative solutions but who were lacking access to the market. By 2019, the connected supplier platform had enabled 18 smart solutions, all utilizing industry 4.0 technology. Jacobs, submitted by Karen Lindsay. Jacobs submitted a top-down approach to improvement with a range of projects that delivered benefits across the business, showing impressive results over a three-year period. It was clear that this team within Jacobs has the backing of senior leadership and that they are personally involved in the improvement system. Judges like the fact-based approach, emphasis on learning from experience, and the focus on results. 
Aramco Asia Quality Management Division, submitted by Sunwoo Yu. Aramco were faced with the continuing need to inspect materials and equipment, both for projects and operating facilities, during the pandemic. They evaluated how to reduce travel and other exposure risks for their expert inspectors and developed an innovative smart helmet that enabled remote inspections. This innovative use of technology gives many business benefits, not just reducing safety risk, but also saving travel time and increasing productivity. Four finalists here, but which of those takes the Improvement System Award? Vince. So, congratulations to Improvement System Award winner, Tofash. The winner wowed the judges with both the inventiveness of their improvement system and also the originality shown during their interview, where they co-presented with two of their suppliers. For the second consecutive year and for yet another fantastic improvement project, the winner is Tofash. Tansel, please accept your award on behalf of Tofash, Improvement System winner 2020. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be here for, the, for this special event celebrating the International Quality Awards. We are pleased, honoured and humbled as Connected Supply team to accept this award and to join past recipients who we admire and respect. As Tofai Supplier Quality, uh, since 2017, Connected Supplier platform started to work with a small dedicated team and integrate technology solution to Tofai suppliers. Proud to say that our half of our improvement obtained by these startups and technology-based solutions. We will continue our effort to create innovative technology-based solutions to look forward to be the best for many years to come. Last but not least, thanks to Chartered Quality Institute for offering recognition to connected suppliers in improvement system category. I hope this recognition of our work can serve as an inspiration to the others in this field. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much for those words. Uh, congratulations on your innovative, uh, your innovative submission and your award. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we come to the CQI volunteer of the Year Award. A new award for 2020, we wanted to celebrate the valuable and vital contribution made by our volunteers. This award recognises an individual that shows real enthusiasm and dedication for volunteering for the CQI, making a positive impact on people and projects. We were taken aback with the volume of nominations for this award and there were some outstanding entries ranging from mentors who have successfully helped people gain chartered status to those who supported their peers providing CPD and networking opportunities through our branch and special interest group networks. The winner has certainly lived up to the spirit of this award. She is chair of her local branch, a member of the Regional Steering Committee, Vice Chair of the Membership Council, Chair of the Nominating Committee charged with recruiting our trustees. But not only that, she's also found time to lead the development of the CQI STEM Ambassador Programme to promote quality as a profession in secondary schools and mentor several people into the fellowship grade at the CQI. So it, was, it is with great gratitude and indeed awe at the sheer scope of your impact uh, to announce that this year's Volunteer of the Year Award winner is Suzanne Hill. Thank you, Vince, for your kind words. Thank you so much for this award. It is a huge honor, especially being up against more than 200 other CQI and IRCA volunteers. Being a volunteer is like having another best friend. The more you put in, the more you get back. The camaraderie amongst fellow volunteers is fantastic, and I would not have reached this recognition without their support and energy. I'm privileged to sit on and trusted to chair a number of CQI committees. I mentor within the CQI scheme. I host and have presented at branch and regional events. I contribute to Quality World and the Knowledge Hub 
as well as supporting individuals in their regrading efforts. I find that volunteering is a two-way relationship. I dedicate my time and experience, and in return, it develops my skills, event management, committee leadership, influencing, networking, as well as the satisfaction of supporting the CPD of quality professionals and contributing to the value the CQI offers members. I'm passionate about quality as a profession. It has given me an exciting career. Volunteering helps me to spread the word about how quality can deliver value to industry and society, as well as being a rewarding job. So thank you to the CQI for enabling me, enabling me to be a volunteer. Thank you also to all my fellow volunteers, especially the Derby and Nottingham Committee, who work so hard beside me to host our annual events programme. It would be remiss of me not to mention our new committee mascot, Boris Junior, the alpaca who joined us at our latest committee meeting. Join the CQI Nottingham Derby LinkedIn group to find out more. Being on committees is great fun. Finally, I hope this recognition helps to encourage existing and new volunteers to contribute to the CQI and to go on to be the next winner. Thank you. I'd just like to reiterate again um, our thanks to all of our volunteers and especially today Suzanne Hill for her huge contribution to the profession and the CQI. Thank you again and well done. So next we come to the CQI Outstanding Contribution Award. This award is made to an individual or organisation which has made a significant and lasting contribution to the quality management discipline with clear consequential benefit to society. Previous winners have included Donald Berwick, Professor John Oakland and David Hutchins. With a strong set of nominations, I'm pleased to see that we are making two awards for outstanding contribution this year. The first winner's scope of contribution to quality management is impressive, spanning academic leadership, education, policy and practice over many years. In addition to his many books and research, his academic leadership, especially in the problem solving sciences, is global in reach through his editorial roles on many leading quality management journals. In the world of education, he has developed and led programmes at Heriot Watt and Strathclyde Universities, and he continues to have a significant influence on policy and practice within industry, and especially within the context of the Scottish public sector. So the first of our winners for outstanding contribution to quality management practice is Professor Gigi Anthony. When Wins called me to let me know that I was winning this award on outstanding contribution to quality management practice from the CQI, I was totally delighted as it came as an incredible surprise. I stand before you with feelings of joy and pride and, and I'm equally humbled by the recognition and honor bestowed on me. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Martin Brenning Jones, the CEO of Catalyst Consulting, and Professor Alex Douglas, the editor of TQM Journal, who nominated me for this special recognition award. I would also like to thank the judges for their generosity in recognizing my contribution. Now, very few things in life are entirely the work of just one person. And my case is no exception. Therefore, I would like to pay tribute to the contributions made by my colleagues, especially the late Dr. John G. Roach in Ireland. That's where I started the journey of quality. Professor Douglas Montgomery from the Arizona State Uni University, United States, and Greg Watson, the past president of the American Society for Quality and past chairman of the International Academy for Quality. It is their guidance constructive feedback on my work, stimulating discussions and inspiration that has encouraged me to grow and prosper in the field of quality management. Quality, it is said, is quite a dry topic. 
At least that is what my students tell me initially in a lecture theater. Some people find it outdated and quite boring, while others find the application into real life either difficult or irrelevant. To all of those who find it boring and dry, I would say there's nothing more exciting than when you find how the smallest of changes in process, the biggest of differences in both product and service quality. To those who find it outdated and boring, I can only say that it is because they haven't seen how it can change the everyday life of an ordinary person because of, of improvements brought about by the police force, health services, or the local authorities who adapt quality improvement methodologies. I hope that this recognition of my work can serve as an inspiration to others in the field of quality management. If my work can make a difference, so can yours. I will continue my efforts to work very closely with the Charter Quality Institute, and I look forward to bringing about positive changes in the quality management discipline for many years to come. Finally, I would like to thank my wife, my daughter, friends, and all my relatives back in India who have been a source of support for many years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Anthony, uh, for those inspirational words. Now, I think we all know that quality academics tend to live long lives. Um, so I know you will have many more years uh, to pursue your passion and get your message across. I hope working with the CQI and the wider quality management profession. Congratulations once again, Professor Anthony. Now, our second winner of the Award for Outstanding Contribution to Quality Management Practice has developed a truly cross-sector quality apprenticeship standard for England. Not an individual, but a team. Where the judging panel recognised a collaborative development process which spanned 12 sectors. The result? A new apprenticeship programme which has the potential to improve the practice of quality management at the crucial base level and at scale to make significant pro progress apologies, in addressing the quality skill shortage experienced by so many sectors. As chair of the industry working group, Felicity Fashade, please accept your award on behalf of the Apprenticeship Trailblazer team for outstanding contribution. Felicity. Hello. Hi, hi everyone. Thank, thank you so much, Vince. And it, it, it's been a great pleasure to accept this award. And I'm certainly not alone. And as you already mentioned, you know, um, we, we've we been, it's a collaborative effort between uh, 17 amazing uh, individuals uh, across, uh, spanning across 13 different sectors. Um, I know many of them will be watching today. So well done. And I know, um, uh, I know they'll all be very, very proud. And we had a common goal as a trailblazer group. Um, we 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 like to you know uh, develop the standard to be able to inspire others to join the quality profession. Uh, for me, um, I I have tremendous support from the team and and the friendship we have built uh, over uh, the year has been very valuable to me, and I'm sure in time we'll be continue to work together um, in the future. Uh, we also have a lot of support from the CQI and the Institute for uh, Apprenticeship and, and, and it has been a re really truly amazing experience for myself and the team. Um, special thank uh, for, to Rene Lebecki and Neil Berg uh, who has kicked off the Trailblazer group. Um, um, Neil has continued to support me for the past year. And, and, and share the chairmanship with me. And we're also very lucky to have uh, expertise uh, from a training provider as well as endpoint assessor. So many thanks to Kate Smith and Mark Smith. And, and once again, th thank you so much. And I really hope uh, many companies out there will be able to benefit from this standard. And, and, and together we'll be able to increase uh, our quality uh, talent pool in the UK. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, 
Felicity. Uh, congratulations to you and of course the whole team uh, for the excellent collaborative effort. Uh, as Professor Anthony said, working together across the profession to address our opportunities and challenges is so important. Uh, and I hope everybody listening has the opportunity to have a look at that apprenticeship so we can start building that important base level of skills. So, to our next award, Quality Professional of the Year. This award celebrates the chartered quality professional who has most advanced their organization's performance through their quality management leadership. Now, Ian, let's please hear about our finalists and their stories. Thank you, Vince. The finalists are Karen Lindsay, Jacobs, Karen puts Jacob's values front and center. She clearly demonstrated her passion for her company, her job, and for quality in general. She seeks out opportunities to be involved in the overall improvement of the business and has tried to use her own business unit to set an example from which to lead change across the business. Ahmed H. Barakat, Qatar Gas. There is no doubt that Ahmed has faced significant challenges in the merging of two large LNG operating companies, Rasgas and Katargas under one quality system. Anyone who has been part of such an exercise, let alone led one, will know just how difficult this is as a change programme. Ahmed should be very proud of what he has achieved to date in a short period of time. David Anderson, Bam Nuttall. David has shown in his career that he not only wants to improve quality performance within his organisation, where he has achieved some outstanding results, but that he recognised the need for quality within his industry to improve as a collective. His work with industry and with quality organisations to increase collaboration is impressive. Vince, please reveal the winner. And the winner of Quality Professional of the Year is David Anderson. Our winner has managed to be influential at all levels, achieving the holy grail of taking the quality function from being a bit player to an essential contributor to the key business decisions. David did this while also building the respect of his team, undertaking significant work out of his day-to-day -day role and retaining a humility which came across clearly to all the judges. David, please accept your award as the Quality Professional of the Year 2020. Well. A bit of a surprise, actually. I was not expecting this. Um, it really is an honour to be picked as the International Quality Professional of the Year. It actually reminds me of someone years ago who said to me, it's not how you see yourself, it's how others see you. And this whole experience of going through the submission for this, where I had people throughout the business uh, helping put together this submission and actually giving me an insight into how they saw me. That was personally very humbling and extremely satisfying as well. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank everyone right through my career. Those who had the patience to put up with my persistent questioning, uh, particularly when I didn't understand something. And also all of those who mentored me and helped me and supported me. Without them, I couldn't achieve half the things that I achieve. I would also like to thank all my friends and colleagues at BUM and in the wider construction industry for supporting what I've tried to achieve and helping steer me and guide me in what together we can collectively achieve. Lastly, I would actually also like to thank the CQI through the CQI corporate partners, through the regional events, through even quality world articles, through all the things that CQI do to share the knowledge and the opportunities that they offer charter quality professionals or any quality professional. It actually opens your eyes, broadens your perspective and enables you to grow as an individual. So thank you, CQI, and thank you to everyone who's helped me. I am truly honoured and humbled to receive this award. Thank you. Thank you so much, David, for those words. Um, excellent to hear.
from a senior quality professional, your perspective. And again, congratulations on, on your award this year. Well done. Now, we come to our quality team of the year award. This award uh, recognizes a team of quality professionals who've contributed most to their organization in terms of governance, assurance, uh, and improvement, uh, the CQI competency framework. So let's find out who our finalists are today. Ian. The finalists are Jacobs Global Quality Team, submitted by Howard Cooper. The Jacobs Global Quality Organization has recently undertaken a fundamental review and refresh of their purpose, strategy and approach. Their submission demonstrated effective leadership by the quality team in driving the transformation of their global management system, securing strong support of process owners and senior leaders to ensure that their business management system delivers the values envisioned. The Ministry of Defence, Defence, Equipment and Support Team, submitted by William Clark. In the spring of 2020, in response to the coronavirus pandemic, the UK government had an urgent requirement to procure personal protective equipment for the National Health Service. This project team quickly established itself to deliver the required PPE through rigorous, rigorous quality approaches and a risk-based governance regime. They engage with a multitude of stakeholders to protect the NHS frontline workers through the provision of protective personal equipment. Ferrovial Agraman Q6 Heathrow Project Team, submitted by Omar Jose Lo Moreno. The team showed that the application of a progressive handover approach, together with the application of technology for assurance documentation, can have a positive impact on on time project delivery. This team delivered an excellent project outcome with no defects at handover. Judges also appreciated the integration of quality with the health, safety and environmental systems. Vince, who is our Quality Team of the Year winner? Thank you. Our Quality Team of the Year winner is... Ministry of Defence, Defence Equipment and Support Team. Well done. The winners who created a management system in a matter of weeks and who through their rigour, skill and determination, saved the UK over £2 billion by reducing the rejection rate of PPE to less than 0.13%. This team is a perfect demonstration that quality is delivered through people. Will the MOD, Defence Equipment and Support Team, please accept your award as the Quality Team of the Year 2020? The floor is yours, David. <coughs> Uh, what, what an absolute honour. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Uh, and as a representative of the team, and, and I know I speak for the whole team, uh, we are absolutely honoured to receive this award. Uh, the pandemic has challenged us all over the last eight months, uh, but none more so than the NHS frontline workers for whom this team has worked tirelessly. Uh, to be recognised for the exceptional levels of governance, assurance and continual improvement within the context of a a worldwide procurement crisis that was in itself uh, as unpredictable and unprecedented as the very virus that had caused it. it is really heartwarming. The entire team had to embrace continued risk-based thinking on every decision that was made. They established an entire management system of records that will now stand up, I am sure, to legal challenges, proprietary and rigour. To be part of a team of 66 exceptional staff from scratch to deliver over 7,000 evaluations, providing billions of items of PPE and medical devices that we now know, you know are saving countless lives, um, and then enable the UK to progress out of the initial lockdown on the 23rd of June. What was our reward? But to now have peer recognition uh, in this from, uh, from yourselves is so gratefully received. Uh, and, I, and I really received this reward, not just for the MOD and the NHS teams that I represent, uh, but the entire NHS front line for who we worked. Thank you ever so much. Thank you so much for those, those inspiring words. Uh, thank you and congratulations to the team once again. Um, and as Matt mentioned when he kicked us off today, I think this underlines the crucial importance of the quality, uh, the quality management profession, uh, quality management and our national quality infrastructure in times like these. So thank you very much to that team and again well done. 
So here we are, the final category of today, our Quality Organisation of the Year Award. This award distinguishes the organisation that best exhibits a culture of quality and puts it at the heart of everything it does. So let's find out about our finalists. Thank you, Vince. The finalists are Capella Associates. Capella, Capella provides consultancy, training, coaching, technical support and assessment, and they are well known for their work in Lean Six Sigma and quality tools. For the second year running, Capella provided evidence that a very small organisation can still exhibit considerable rigour in designing, implementing and operating a management system that puts quality at its heart. In responding to the challenges of coronavirus, everyone at Capella has been driven by wanting to make the company stronger. The company values of pride, integrity and passion shone through the submission and there was a live demonstration of these during the interview. Dubai Police Dubai Police is a global leader amongst police forces in their application of AI to create new ways of policing, including fundamentally challenging the concept of a police station. They have achieved excellent results in their strategy for automation, which is at a world-class level. Judges were impressed how such a large team of presenters could speak as one voice and be so committed and enthusiastic. Bam Nuttall. Bam Nuttall has more than 150 years experience delivering a diverse range of projects, from supporting the British Antarctic Survey Team aboard the Royal Research Ship Sir David Attenborough, to creating a 3D concrete cycle bridge in Eindhoven. It was great to see how this construction company have embedded quality methods, culture and diversity from their strategic objectives to their new apprentices. Their investment and contribution to, to construction and the wider quality community are a tribute to them. Judges were impressed by their mentoring and reverse mentoring systems with a particularly high percentage of mentors to employees. LifeScan. LifeScan, as we heard earlier, is a global company which designs and manufactures blood glucose monitoring kits for the management of diabetes and which supplies products to 20 million diabetics worldwide. Rona and Lynn presented an exemplary example of a quality management system where it was excellent to see that their patients are at the heart of everything they do. Following their recent divestment from a large multinational corporation, they have achieved a huge shift in culture and behaviours in a relatively short amount of time and are well placed to grow from here. Jacobs. As a global organisation with a $15 billion turnover and 55,000 employees, the Jacobs submission stated that they regard the world as their interested parties. A huge claim, but one which, by the end of their presentation, the judges understood and agreed with. The Jacobs' ambition as an organisation to drive the world to be a better place to live shone through from this team. Judges appreciated their honesty in describing times when they struggled and liked the way they benchmarked globally to help them get up the value chain. Vince, over to you. Thank you. What a superb set of finalists. Now, this year we have decided to recognise winners in both the small, medium and large enterprise categories. So firstly, the winner representing small, medium enterprise is Capella Associates. Well done. An extremely formidable set of five finalists but Capella Associates stood out due to the way they demonstrated how they exhibit quality in every single thing that they do, and as an organisation has a relentless commitment to its people. Will Capella please accept your award as a winner of Quality Organisation of the Year? Hello. I certainly will. Absolutely thrilled and excited. Thank you very much indeed. Um, this year has brought the most difficult of challenges for all of our team, but it's also brought some of the best rewards. We've stayed focused and strong. We've worked together and supported each other. And um, we've delivered results that we're all hugely proud of. Applying for the award gave us an opportunity to reflect on our response to um, the pandemic and to gain constructive feedback from the judges and from each other 
and has been a really valuable and worthwhile experience that I would encourage anybody to, to enter for. It takes a little bit of um, time, investment and some courage to open ourselves to third party scrutiny. And um, I congratulate everybody that has grasped this opportunity and, and in particular those that have um, reached the finalist stage of the awards this year. I'd like to thank the CQI and the judges for the opportunities that this award brings um, and in particular for hosting this event in the in a most difficult year. Most of all, I'd like to thank the Capella team um, who have worked so hard um, with such dedication and passion, delivering outstanding results. And really, this award is a recognition for all of the hard work of the whole team. And I'm delighted to accept it on behalf of everybody. And it's thoroughly deserved. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Kate, for those inspiring and encouraging words. Um, as we all work through the pandemic and con congratulations once again to you and your entire team. Well done. So, to reveal the final winner of today and indeed this year, the winner of Organisation of the Year for Large Enterprise is Jacobs. Jacobs is an organisation where the judges genuinely found it hard to find areas for improvement. Their presentation involved a global team where passing from one presenter to another or giving multi-member answers to questions happened seamlessly and where the most technical quality questions were voluntarily answered by the group chief operating officer. Jacobs, please accept your award as a winner of the IQA Quality Organisation of the Year 2020. Hello. On behalf of all of Jacobs, thank you. This is uh, uh, very humbling, and we are we are extremely appreciative for the honor. Um, you know, as mentioned during the presentation, and while we were applying for the award, we um, we really got to sit back and look at all of the uh, all of the positive influence and positive impacts that uh, that our fifty five thousand people have on the world, and uh, and and it's a it's a credit to the quality and commitment to quality that, uh, that, 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 that we display every single day in, uh, in what we do. Um, we also realized during the application of the award is that all of us around the world have, have faced tremendous challenges in 2020, but it was that true focus and commitment to quality and performance uh, that was a uh, foundational element for how we got through. It's no doubt that the, the challenges of 2021 uh, will be uh, no different, um, but we, uh, we feel like we're, we're well prepared for the future. Uh, again, thank you to the awards committee. Thank you and congratulations to all the finalists. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to celebrating with our team. Thank you so much. Um, and congratulations to you and, and 55,000 people in Jacobs. Um, what a great way to finish the awards as we started talking about quality management as a strategic weapon um, and as a way to, um, to improve the quality of life for society as a whole. So well done and congratulations. Thank you for joining us. So there we are. Congratulations to our wonderful winners. Um, a huge thank you to our headline partner, UCAS, and thank you to all of you for joining us today uh, to celebrate the power of quality management. Before I sign off, an important note. The CQI International Awards will be back in 2022. We recognise that the external challenges we all face will continue to require the full focus of our members and partners over the coming months. So we think it is right to pause for a time while we all navigate into the new normal. We will not see you in 21 but we will look forward to celebrating what I'm sure will be more inspirational stories in 2022. Now, to close today's event, I'm delighted as ever to welcome our Chair of the Judges, Estelle Clark, who, as in all previous iterations of these awards, has been the glue in driving the judging process and supporting our judging teams. My personal thanks 
for your orchestration again this year and I look forward to your final reflections as the one person who sees the totality of our finalists and winners and achievements. Estelle, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for those kind words, Vince. And I'm truly honoured and, and I re recognise, oh, really I do, how, how wonderful it is to have that opportunity to, uh, to see you all, uh, all entries and to hear you all in the, in the interviews. And I'd like to add my congratulations to those of Vince and to those of Matt, to all our finalists, all of whom were wonderful, um, but especially to all our winners. And uh, it was lovely seeing your reactions. Uh, today. Now, now clear, I'm probably about the dozenth person during the last hour to say that this has been a challenging year, but uh, I don't think I can uh, move, move on without reflecting that, that this has been a challenging year. I'm thinking that it's been challenging for entrants uh, who had to manage to get their applications together when they may have been working at home. Maybe they were uh, very, very busy because there were a lot of additional work to be done. And maybe their managers were and not able to provide the amount of support that they normally would. Uh, and I'm really grateful for your motivation. Uh, I, I recognize that it's been a challenging year, not only for you, but also for all of those people who would have liked to have entered, but found that in 2020, for various reasons, they were unable to. Those people who were too busy, those people who were at home, those people who were juggling an, a number of new priorities, and those people who are, who've been ill. And I recognise that this has also been a challenging year for all of the CQI staff who've had to manage new systems, uncertainty about numbers, and not quite sure exactly how today would, would work, etc. Uh, and finally, I want to acknowledge that this has been a challenging year for the judges. Uh, one of the things that the judges really like in other years has been the opportunity to gather together, uh, to be there in person during the interviews and to have our own little sort of team sets of team spirit going on. Uh, and we haven't been able to do that in quite the same way either. I normally at this point, I ask the judges to stand up so that everyone can applaud them. Uh, that seems a pretty pointless thing to do today because you can't see them um, and they can't hear you. But could you please tell me that in your heart that you are applauding them in any case? And I'm, I'm assuming that that's, uh, that's the case. And I, I think I can, yeah, I can, I can feel it. Um, so thank you, everyone, and those people I can see on the screen who are clapping. Thank you for for recognising the work that the judges the judges do. But you know, despite being a really difficult year, some things work really well. So I think some things work better than they had done previously. Uh, the changes in two thousand and twenty gave us the opportunity to streamline our processes. I think that truly for the first time, non-UK entries were not disadvantaged in any way. You know, previously we've had um, entrants from the UK attending in person in the interviews, and we've had non-UK entrants attending via digital means. And this year, everybody was, it was, a, you know, it was a, um, whatever the word is, it was a, a, the, the right sort of playing field. Um, and, and I think that that was, that was an improvement that everybody, everybody recognised and which we really liked. We also benefited from the fact that we have some new categories and the new categories gave everyone something to aspire to. And so for the first time, I feel that no matter what your role has been in quality, there's been something that is the award that you can participate in, that you can enter or be nominated for. And again, I think that that is a, a huge, uh, has a huge improvement and, and something that we've benefited from this year. And finally, this year, of course, entries, as you saw in the video at the beginning, they, they held up. Um, there were some nail-biting days. There were some times when, you know, we really weren't sure about what was going to happen. But at the end of it all, um, entries sustained. And in some categories, they went up and they sustained uh, in, in relation to being truly international as well. And for all of that, um, I'm hugely grateful to everybody who was, who was part of it. But, you know, there's more than that. What we've seen in 2020 is that quality professionals and quality organisations continue to wish to be bold, to be bold enough to enter, to share their stories, to be prepared to give us all something which is inspirational and to give us all something that we can learn from. And this year, the judges have been fortunate enough to be able to read and hear from and meet some fantastic people doing some fantastic things, and it has been truly inspirational. 
And it reminds me um, of a quote um, from Winston Churchill. And I'm um, noting that Winston Churchill himself won an award this week, posthumously, for being the greatest prime minister the UK has ever had. And one of the many notable things that Winston said was he said, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity and the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. And I'm reflecting that as difficult as this year has been, I'm seeing a number of quality professionals, many, many quality professionals and many quality organisations who've seen that there is indeed opportunity in this darkness and that there are things that they are uniquely able to offer. Uh, now, those people who know me probably are aware that I rarely quote Winston Churchill. So saying much the same thing, but in slightly different words, um, this is Oscar Wilde. Between the optimist and the pessimist, the difference tween is droll. The optimist sees the donut, the pessimist sees the hole. And I know that this year that there, you know, there is a hole that's there, but I'm really grateful to quality professionals who are able to still see the donut. And so in my closing thoughts here, the International Quality Awards in the future, we're not going to see this in 2021, uh, but we know the awards will be back in 2022. And you know I love the awards, but it's not what I love best. What I love best is the fact that quality professionals globally, quality organizations globally, are prepared to generously be bold, share their stories, inspire people, and make the world a better place. And those people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world, you know what? They're the ones who will, with or without awards. So please, let's nurture our inner optimist and our crazy selves and see what quality professionals can do to make our post-COVID world a better place for everyone. Keep safe. Thank you. Thank you, Estelle. Thank you for those words. Thank you for the donuts. Thank you everybody for joining us. And finally, a huge congratulation to all of our winners. Don't forget that you can read about our winners and relive this event at quality.org. We won't see you next year, but we look forward to seeing you in 2022. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>